This video is about the case study of Typhoon Haiyan. It is a paper one case study, it is a question one case study, and it occurred on November the 3rd through to November the 11th, 2013. Now, it was a tropical storm that uh, was located in Southeast Asia, and this typhoon originated in the Western Pacific Ocean, where the conditions were as required for a tropical storm to form. For example, ocean temperatures of above 26.5 degrees Celsius and a low wind shear. The areas affected um, were 764 islands, and particularly the Philippines, which is our key focus for our primary and secondary effects. Now, as mentioned earlier, it originated in the Western Pacific Ocean, started out as a typhoon and increased to a super typhoon, a category five um, storm, which is the maximum on the Sapphire Simpson scale. Um, you see that it hit landfall in China, and this is where the storm stopped because it obviously did not have the energy it needed. A few primary effects here, 313 km per hour winds, as well as 2,819 millimetres of rainfall. Now we'll look at this image, um, which shows us um, a primary effect, and we're going to look at some more primary effects in addition to what is shown here. Um, what is shown here are the storm surges. They experienced um, seven metre high waves, um, between five and seven metre high waves, which obviously led to flooding. 90% um, of Tacloban uh, was destroyed and in addition to this 6,190 people sadly lost their lives um, to this natural hazard. Um, now storm surges can not only cause um, flooding but can also um, destroy in the process the very very strong waves which meant that 11 million tonnes of crops were destroyed in this process too. Moving on then to secondary effects. Um, there was 4.1 million people made homeless um, from this tropical storm. That's a significant amount of people. Um, in addition to this, unfortunately, looting took place. People took advantage of buildings being left. And in addition to this, um, the fishing had to stop. And that's a main um, source of income for a lot of locals in the Philippines um, is fishing. In addition to this, um, rice prices rose by 12% uh, worldwide, and this was due to lost harvests from the tropical storm. Um, and in addition to this, there was reduced tourism um, to the country because of this natural um, hazard. Moving on then to immediate responses, the authorities were able to evacuate over 800,000 people and in the process were able to set up 1,200 evacuation centres as seen in the photograph. Um, temporary shelters such as tents were set up, um, buildings that still remained that were big buildings and um, people um, sought refuge in there as well. Um, three days after the storm was when the aid arrived and this is a really really significant point if you ever get asked to evaluate um, responses to a tropical storm um, three days could significantly um, impact the, the death toll um, in addition to this uh, there was 1.5 billion dollars worth of foreign aid to support Moving on then to long-term responses, um, the image you can see here is the Cash for Work programme and this is where they paid people to help clear the debris and to rebuild um, places like Tacloban. Oxfam, the charity, the NGO, replaced the fishing boats. As I mentioned earlier, that is the main um, source of income for the majority of people in the Philippines and therefore by replacing their fishing boats they're able to get back out and earn money. There was also the Build Back Better program um, aimed to upgrade damaged buildings to protect them from a storm. Now all of this information could be asked in multiple different ways. Um, you could just be asked about the primary and secondary effects or the immediate and long-term responses.